Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. Hello, everybody. Now, now we're gonna go ahead and react to um, Pow, Gallic football. Let's see what it's up. Gallic football. Let's see what's what. Here come the Irish, everybody. Let's get ready for explosions, lots of drunkenness, and excellent literature. Oh, I like I like potato soup too. Oh yeah. And then when you bring it over to the United States, we end up throwing a bunch of cheese and bacon in it, and it's even better. And Kentucky bourbon, inexplicably, but it happens a lot. And donut sprinkles. Personally, I, I don't I'm, know I'm a why. big fan of Irish whiskey as opposed to American bourbons and whiskeys and stuff, or even Canadian whiskeys, but that's just me and my tastes. Now, most Irish people here in the United States enjoy really uh, mass-produced bourbon these days. Mm. All right, let's go. All right, let's get it on him, dear. Then explains the rules of Gaelic football. Gaelic football is an Irish sport played with two teams of 15 players each. The game is played on a field that's generally a maximum of 145 metres by 85 metres. These are the goals which are 6.5 metres wide and the crossbar which is 2.5 metres above the ground. Unlike in soccer, the posts extend above the crossbar just like in rugby. Okay, so this is basically hurling without the sticks. Yeah, this is... This is the foot version of it. There's no stick. <laughs> oh, God. Wait a minute here. <laughs> hey, wait a second here. Th th this seems... Yeah, they're just sitting there taking sports and just tweaking it a little bit and calling it. It's an entirely different sport. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm just kidding around. After a few drinks. Yeah. The exact same goals and field dimensions are used in hurling. The object of the game is for your team to score more overall points than the opposing team. To score, a player must kick the ball into the goal or over the crossbar. If they successfully kick the ball under the... That just looked like soccer for a minute. Yeah. That's all that was. Crossbar into the net. This is a goal and is worth three points. If a player kicks or fists the ball over the crossbar but between the posts, this is a point and this scores one point. The game is played in two 30 minute halves for a combined playing time of 60 minutes. High score at the end of time wins. Any game that results in a draw must be replayed. Wait, there's more, isn't there? Oh, yeah, Gaelic football. Of course there's more, and I feel like overtime for an Irish sport would be settled in a fist fight. Uh, that, I think that's only after like seven or eight overtimes or something like that. You get the captain of both teams to get out there in the center of the ring and just duke it out with each other. And then they find some sort of random historical family reasons as to why they don't like each other. Probably. Uh, just, that sounds like that sounds like how we do it here too. It's weird. Ball looks complicated, and moving the ball around the field is the most difficult part to understand. There's a lot of things you can and can't do to move the ball up the field in Gaelic football. You can move the ball by kicking it out of your hands, kicking it along the ground, and running with the ball in your hands so long as it's not more than four steps. If after four steps you want to keep the ball, you must hop the ball off your foot to be eligible to take another four steps. This is known as soloing and is the equivalent of dribbling in soccer. You can also choose to solo the ball by bouncing it from the ground, but you're not allowed to do that twice in a row. Therefore, most players alternate between hopping it from the foot and bouncing it on the ground. A player can catch the ball with his hands. So traveling, but more complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's like you got. It's like you got to be able to sit there and bounce it off of one of your feet, and then sit there. And if you don't go any further, then you can't bounce it off the off the ground more than once. Like what? Just say traveling. I don't know. It feels they like they can it, simplify this, and yet at the same time, it feels like the making it more complicated makes it more. Maybe of a, I don't know. Maybe uh, because we're game. Americans and we're stupid, and we can. You know, they don't know. They have playoffs. What the fuck is that? They we have playoffs. Yeah, I know we have playoffs. Oh, they don't do playoffs. See? We're stupid. Yeah, we're dumb. You have any idea how much more exciting that makes? All it? of I guess all of the dumb Irish came over here. That's what it was. <laughs> Uh, and all the smart ones stayed over there. In the air, a player can hand pass to a teammate where you slap the ball with an open palm, and a player can fist the ball where you strike the ball to a teammate with a clenched fist. However, a player cannot touch the ball on the ground with his hands or lift it with his knees. And a player cannot throw the ball 
There are 15 members of the opposing team who are trying to take the ball away from you so that they can score themselves. They are allowed to make shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact so long as the opponent has possession of the ball. Or if no one has the ball, be shoulder-to-shoulder -to, -shoulder to the opponent nearest the ball. They are also allowed to use their hands to block shots or to knock the ball out of your grasp. If you're used to Australian rules football, this may seem very familiar, but there's a few other things that you'll need to understand before playing or going to a game. For example, free kick. A free kick is a restart in play, usually after a foul. If a foul occurs, a free kick is awarded either at the spot of the foul, where the ball lands after a foul, or the 13 meter line for fouls inside the 13 meter area. A player has to declare whether to play the ball out of his hands or from the ground. That is a nice looking grass though. Yes. Oh yeah, I mean, you, um, with it being Ireland, I can understand how they could keep an excellent lawn. Don't get me wrong, it's just... The way that they're mowing it, it does look good. It does. It's nice. Right. No, what are we, Snoop Dogg? What's that? I don't know. Hank Hill would look at it and go, that's a nice lawn. No, that, you, no, that's a really what. nice lawn right there. I'll tell you what. You think Hank Hill's Irish? Foul. If a player commits any of these infractions, a foul is assessed and the other team is awarded possession of the ball by way of a free kick. A player can also be cautioned with a yellow card, sent off with a black card but a substitute may replace him, or a red card where you are sent off the pitch without a substitute replacement. Penalty kick. If a foul is committed on a player with a legitimate chance to score, a penalty shot will be given to the attacking team. The ball is placed on the ground at the 13 meter line and only the goalkeeper can guard the net. Just like in soccer, it's one kick only, and any goals scored count towards the overall score. Substitution. A team is allowed to substitute up to five players. It's like soccer with hands at some point. Yeah, there's there's some of that that's almost that way. But I know there's like areas where you can like, and they're like kind of like an Australian rules soccer or an Australian rules football, where it's like you would climb over a dude to get the ball or something. Oh, when they jump on their backs and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, do I, I don't know. Do they do that in this one? I don't think I've seen too much of that. Well, let's see. Okay. Plays per game. Very similar to soccer, the players must wait in the substitution area and players must enter or exit at the designated area only, and only in a stoppage of play. To the uninitiated, Gaelic football seems ridiculously complicated, but once you understand the rules, it becomes a pretty cool sport. Where it's like, I guess it could be simplified, but I suppose there's, I mean, I suppose there's a good reason as to why those rules are the way they are. Yeah, they've been doing it So. Long. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody sometimes, to change the rules. It's just, uh, it's, yeah, it's beautiful. it could be simplified. Sometimes but it's I, to make it more intricate, intricate makes it more uh, strategy based. Yeah, kinda. I guess so you would I have mean, to, you know, because a lot of the best athletes you'll notice are also some of the most intelligent. So it's uh, that's not always the case, but some of the best ones out there are some of the most intelligent people. To watch. If you found this video at all helpful, please like, oh, that share. Was, that was the gist of it, and of course, that was uh, what YouTube channel was that? This Nili. I think that's a nin. 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 Nin -li? Nin -li. Nin -li? I thought it was Nili. Anyways, a good good channel. Check it out. Uh, explains the rules of a lot of sports: Australian rules, American football, yeah. Canadian football, ice hockey. You want to know know the rules of a sport? Check out that channel. As for us, hold on. Goodbye, everybody. Bull on. Oh, I need another beer. And I don't drink today. <laughs> At this moment. <laughs> Wait a little bit. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, the sun is going down, so I might. I don't know. Oh, it is. All right then. You you go. You do your. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to get high. Uh,